Major breaking news, 19 attorney generals from the left-wing states in America that don't like guns, guess what, have just made a terrible strategic mistake, and I'm sure they don't know it. They will learn about it in this video. Specifically, they have written a letter to the White House asking restrictions to be made on certain manufacturing plants that manufacture 5.56 ammunition. Their statements in this letter will come back to bite them on the dupa or butt depending on your nationality. Stay tuned, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this screw up by the anti-gunners in America. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner Second Amendment channel, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and I'm proud to say a two-time top five finalist in the 2024 Gundy Awards Top Male Influencer category, as well as the Top Voices of the Second Amendment category. I appreciate your support, and I'm honored to be nominated and a finalist in both categories. All right, folks, so major news. You may have heard about this from under channels, but I'm going to take it to the next level. Specifically, I'm going to show you how this letter, authored by Letitia James, the Attorney General of New York, and 18 of her Attorney General friends from around the country, have written a letter to the Joe Biden White House asking that they take steps to try to restrict the ability of the Lake City Ammunition Plant in Missouri, or Missouri, depending on where you are in Missouri, to sell 5.56 ammunition to the civilian marketplace. Well, that's a typical virtue signaling PR ploy that I would expect out of most numbskull attorney generals trying to become the next governor of the respective states. This kind of like PR ploy where you write a high profile letter and then you try to generate PR attention in the news cycles with all the papers lauding you for being a good progressive. That's exactly what I would do, frankly, if I were a liberal progressive attorney general in a state who wanted to become the next governor of the state. But guess what? I have good news for the Second Amendment movement before we delve into this letter. Specifically, it turns out that this letter is going to backfire terribly on the anti-gunners in this country because some of the factual concessions that have been made about the number of rounds that have been manufactured and sold in the civilian market is essentially going to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that AR-15s and AR-15 style firearms that take and shoot 5.56 right, 5.56 caliber uh, rifle rounds are ubiquitous. Specifically this letter that was written to the White House Office of Gun Violence Prevention in the White House, right? Uh, it specifically asks that the White House Office of Gun Violence Pre Prevention conduct an investigation into the contracting processes that led to the situation and to take action to ensure that military grade and military subsidized ammunition stays out of civilian hands. This was written by the governor, uh, by the attorney generals of 19 states. I'll put a list to it uh, in the video here down below. And they talk about how these rounds, specifically these rounds of 5.56 five, millimeter rounds, have been manufactured by the Lake City plant in Missouri and how they keep finding their way into our communities, also known as America, because we have a Second Amendment. But specifically, this is what's going to blow up in the anti-gunner's face. They write in this letter the following, quote, in the short term, we ask your office at the White House to investigate the contracting and manufacturing practices, here's the key language, that led, which means it's already occurred, it's a fact, historical fact. The contracting to manufacturing practices that led to so many billions, billions, billions with a B of military grade rounds being sold into our communities and to issue a public report with recommendations about how to end the diversion of military ammunition into civilian hands. Uh oh. Why is it very, very bad for the anti-gun community to have just admitted that, quote unquote, billions with a B, billions of military grade rounds of 5.56 five, millimeter ammunition has been sold into the civilian markets? Well, it's very bad for the anti-gunners for several reasons, because it proves many points that the Second Amendment community wants to prove. To begin with, we're going to get to common use in one second as a matter of constitutional law. But before we even get to that, let's just talk about common sense and basic math just to show how law-abiding Americans are who own AR-15 
style firearms that take 556 five, rounds, 556 five, millimeter rounds into their semi-automatic rifles. Let's just do some back of the napkin math. First of all, the anti-gunners in their letter talk about billions. Now, I think they're talking about many billions, by the way. But let's be very conservative. We're, we can be conservative here. Let us assume that where they say many billions of military-grade rounds are being sold to the civilian markets, let's assume for the sake of argument they're only referring to two billion. Because billions requires two or more, right? So billions, let's just assume they're talking about two billion rounds of 5.56 ammunition that's been sold by this plant to the civilian market. Now, let us take that number of 2 billion, set it aside, 2 billion rounds, just from that one manufacturing plant. That's it. Now, let us then count up the number of rounds that have been used, and we'll be very aggressively over-exaggerated here. The number of rounds of 5.56 rounds, or any rounds whatsoever, that have been used in the 13, 13 mass shootings in the United States as defined as mass shootings by the FBI. So we take the FBI data, which I think is the most credible because of the way they define a mass shooting. Uh, I think it's four or more people being killed, not including the shooter, but nevertheless, whatever the FBI defines mass shootings, it's not for propaganda purposes, matter of fact, at least, it's somewhat objective. So in 2022, there were 13 mass shootings in the United States according to the FBI. Now let us assume for the sake of argument, and this is not accurate, but we're gonna assume for the argument, that every single one of those 13 mass shootings in 2022, as defined by the FBI, used the same number of rounds used by Stephen Paddock, the mass psychopathic killer in Las Vegas during the Las Vegas shooting, where he shot approximately 1,100 rounds, 1,100 rounds. So let's assume that 1,100 rounds per mass shooting was shot 2022 in 13 mass shootings as defined as mass shootings by the FBI. Well, that would be a total of just over 14,000 rounds, which as you know, is it now completely exaggerated, completely exaggerated because you know, the Stephen Paddock thing in Vegas was insane. Um, these others do not have as many rounds at all, but we're gonna assume they were all the same level and same caliber in terms of the numbers of rounds used. Well, that total was a little over more, more than 14,000 rounds shot in the 13 mass shootings as defined by the FBI in 2022. Now let us compare 14,000 rounds with 2 billion rounds, my conservative estimate of what this letter is admitted, when it's probably more like 4 or 5 billion, but let's assume 2 billion. So if you do the math and you take 14,000 rounds used in the mass shootings in 2022, and you compare that to the 2 billion rounds, which is a lot more, that came out of Lake City, the manufacturing there, you're literally looking at the number of rounds of 556 five, rounds that have been used in some sort of mass shootings somewhere on the order of magnitude of a 0.00007%. You're you're talking about nothing. Nothing as a matter of statistics. These are beyond negligible. These are beyond trace amounts in terms of the numbers. And yet here you have the anti-gunners trying to take away billions of rounds that Americans have willfully desired and bought in the marketplace because of a trace amount of ammunition that was misused by psychopaths in the mass shootings, let's say in 2022. But you get my point. You can do, I'm sure you all can do all sorts of different kinds of math and you probably will on X. Uh, and I applaud you for doing that. I just want to give you the illustration of how to think about this. Again, I'm not trying to suggest or, or downplay the dangers of mass shootings, which is why I don't believe in gun-free zones. Uh, if some psychopath comes in to do a mass shooting, you want to shoot him or her fast. Uh, and that's why you want armed citizens right there in the room along with armed administrators and armed teachers. Um, which is what we, we've talked about before. But nevertheless, with that said, the number of rounds that they're talking about that were engaged in mass shootings versus the number of rounds that were just held generally by the population, uh, it's minuscule in terms of the number of these rounds that are misused. But let's take it to the next level. We all know that the relevant legal standard for an arms ban case, uh, whether or not an arm can be banned, is, is that arm 
in common use by Americans for lawful purposes. This is a very favorable standard for the Second Amendment community. Do not kid yourself. And if anybody tells you they're wrong, uh, this is wrong, uh, do not believe them. The in common use by Americans for lawful purposes is the best standard we can get, and it's an excellent standard. It derives from Miller and out of Heller, and it is very good for us because it allows us to protect all the guns and all the weapons that we currently have, including AR-15s, uh, AKs, uh, semi-automatic pistols, revolvers, uh, and su likely suppressor short barrel rifles and short barrel shotguns in time. It will allow all these things to be protected right now, right here. And we need to win those right here and right now before we can consider any other major victories. Because if we lose those cases, uh, we have a problem. We don't want to lose those cases. And the common use test will allow us to prevail. So in light of this, what does this mistake by the anti-gun state, these anti-gun attorney generals, how does this help us? They are conceding with this billions, many billions of military grade rounds of 5.56 millimeter rounds out there. They're conceding the ubiquitousness of these AR-15 style firearms that take this type of ammunition. Keep in mind that uh, in the 2016 Supreme Court case of Caetano, the Supreme Court indicated that the 200,000 stun guns that were owned, not fired by the way, just owned, purchased by Americans, constituted uh, common use. That was sufficiently big enough number for the Alito concurrence at least, and seemed to be indicative, indi indicative that this is what is the key number. Uh, doesn't could be lower, but certainly 200,000 or more seems to indicate that's common use according to the Supreme Court given the Caetano decision. Decision. And certainly you need a lot more than 200,000 AR-15 style firearms to go through billions and billions of 556 five, ammunition. And we're not talking about the ammunition that's like 223 uh, and other kinds of things like 6.5 Creedmoor and 308s and, and 30 aught 6 and all these other things that are out there uh, in addition to the 556 five, rounds that presumably can be shot in semi automatic rifles. And you guys will, you know, clarify anything you think and, and build on that in the comments below. But you get my point here. So again, this many billions of rounds can not only be used to show how rare they are to be misused by criminals, but it can also be shown that how many AR-15s and other semi-automatic rifles that take this kind of round are out there. Uh, then I think you can take this idea that they've just given us and talk about the number of AR-15s just by certain math, because if you look at the comments made by a lot of the anti-gun politicians, they'll stand up on the Senate floor and make comments. Let's just take it an illustration of how to do some other math while we're on the topic of math and defending our rights here. Look at Chairwoman Carolyn uh, Maloney, out of uh, the Democrat, of course, out of the state of New York. She's admitted, uh, I think earlier this year, well, I guess earlier in 2023, that there were five gun companies that made over $1 billion over the last decade selling quote-unquote military-style assault weapons to civilians. Well, a couple things. First of all, Americans have the right to choose what we want to own right? Marketing doesn't make us buy stuff. If marketing dollars was all it took to make us buy things that we don't want, well, Hollywood would be a lot more successful. Disney would be doing much better than it is. All those crappy Star Wars movies that everyone hates and all those, you know, terrible Marvel movies that have been, you know, c c cratering at the box office, these would not exist because their marketing budgets are mammoth. But it just goes to show you that the reason why there are many billions of 55 six rounds being sold is because Americans actually want them because there's countless exa examples of great marketing campaigns utterly failing because the product was no good. You know, the old saying on Wall Street, a great marketing campaign will make a crappy product fail faster. That's all it does as Hollywood is learning the hard way right now. Now, with this said, Let's talk about the math associated with AR-15s. For the sake of argument and simplicity, let's assume that every AR-15, and I know this is just a, a, a ballpark number for the sake of argument here. Let's assume that every AR-15 or every AR-style firearm in the United States costs about $1,000 on average uh, to purchase. So then you take $1,000 on average. I'm sure someone can do the actual math out there and figure out the actual number, uh, but I'm just going to assume every AR-15 is $1,000, and then you take take that thousand dollars and you divide it into the one billion dollars the one billion dollars that uh, congresswoman carolyn uh, maloney is talking about and you will see that there are millions and millions of ars being sold using the data given to us 
by anti-gun politicians. And I think that one of the things we need to do in the Second Amendment movement is to really keep looking at whatever the anti-gun politicians, or like these attorney generals that wrote this letter to the White House, talk about these data, let's find a way to use the data. Because this comment about billions of military-grade rounds not only is going to help us in the Second Amendment community be be victorious in the AR-15, AK-47, you know, semi-automatic rifle fights over their bans and whether or not they're in common use because they're in common use by Americans for, law pur- for lawful purposes, they cannot be banned. And keep in mind that that standard of in common use by Americans for lawful purposes is part of the historical standard. And that's important because, as you know, once the text is implicated, the Second Amendment, the burden shifts to the government. So the government bears the burden to show that these firearms are not, are not in common use and they're simply not not capable of doing it where their politicians are sending out documents like this one that Letitia James sent out to the White House, which is a government document and can be used as a party opponent admission against all these attorney generals in all these states. So I hope the lawyers that are litigating against the states of California, Arizona, New York, Connecticut, Delaware, D.C., Hawaii, Illinois, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, Rhode Island, Washington, Vermont, and Oregon. Any of you all out there litigating on the issue of magazines and or AR-15s or semi-automatic rifle bans, uh, I would take notice of this document and start looking to take advantage of it because there's a lot of good ways that you can use it. Uh, I'm just giving you a couple illustrations by this video. I'm sure you all can come up with even more now that I've got you thinking along these lines. So anyway, well, I will put a link to the letter down below and uh, maybe I'll put some graphics up about some of the math that I've done, see if you agree with it. And again, I hope you learned something here today at the Four Boxes Diner. Make sure you follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner. Be sure you've subscribed because some people say they're getting knocked off and not being able, they're getting unsubscribed somehow. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel. And again, we will see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.